Welcome guys to this review of the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix and well what a race it was there was many surprising things happening in the race surprise leaders as we'll get on to later and a great battle in the midfield and even at the top as well at times for the race win and the podium but we are now going to get into what happened specifically and first off let's get into the results of the Grand Prix. So for the first time since Hungary in 2017, I believe, Ferrari got a 1-2 at Singapore. Sebastian Vettel gets his first win in 13 months since Spa 2018. Charles Leclerc second, Lewis, uh, not Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen third. Lewis Hamilton fourth, Valtteri Bottas fifth, Alex Albon sixth, Lando Norris in seventh, Gasly eighth, Hulkenberg ninth, and Antonio Giovinazzi in tenth. And then outside the points, but finishing the race, Grosjean, Sainz, Stroll, Ricardo, Kvyat, Kubica and Magnussen. And retiring was Raikkonen, Perez and Russell. But now let's get into it. And first off, Mercedes. Now, in the first 20 laps, they were looking very good, Mercedes, because they had probably the pace to win. All they had to do, really was get the safety, or not the safety car, the uh, pit stop phase part of the race correct. And they didn't. They completely flopped when it came to that by running too long, letting Vettel and Leclerc, who had fresh, clean air, get the undercut, start pulling time on Hamilton, and that is what cost Mercedes the race. Now, I think there was two reasons as to why they did what they did. One, they were hoping for a safety car. And two, they were hoping that Stroll, uh, Giovinazzi, Gasly and Ricardo would hold those drivers back. But the thing is, even drivers like Giovinazzi were going faster than Lewis Hamilton. So it was never going to work. And you have to say that the strategy today by Mercedes was terrible because... What they were hoping for was never really going to work out at the time they were hoping it for, to, for it to come out. And it cost them definitely a podium and absolutely an opportunity to go for the race victory. No doubt about that whatsoever. Very poor by uh, James Valls. And yet a result that for Mercedes, this result is just not good enough. It's not good enough. P4 and P5. That is not the result they should be coming away with. They should have been right there contending for race victory at the very least. But P4 and P5, I'm sorry, it's not a good result. And this weekend, Mercedes, um, I think, have failed this weekend. They really have failed. And they've got to get their act together for Russia because with Ferrari's new upgrade package, Ferrari are back. And talking of Ferrari, let's get on to them now. Sebastian Vettel winning the race. He is now the record holder at this circuit for race victories. And does he deserve to win? Probably not, but he does deserve to be on the podium. No doubt about it. He has drove mostly well this weekend. Um, but when it came to, you know, Vettel and Leclerc and who should have won and Leclerc being robbed... I'm going to make this perfectly clear. From a driver's perspective, yes, Charles Leclerc should have been pitted before Sebastian Vettel. No doubt about that. But at the end of the day, Ferrari and their drivers are not contending for the driver's championship. So they're not having or needing to favour one driver over another to contend for the World Championship. And by the way, before anyone says Charles Leclerc is in contention, just stop. He's not. He's too far behind. He's driving so well right now. And the Ferrari car is really good. But he's not contending. He's not at all. Neither is Sebastian Vettel. If you're not in a driver's title fight, then Ferrari... Fighting at the front of the field have got to find a way, of course, to try and get a 1-2 if they can. And that's what they did. So don't blame Ferrari for what they did. What they did was best for the team. The team matters more than the drivers, especially when your drivers are not contending for a world title. A driver's world title, to be exact. So Ferrari, I think, were fine for what they did. 
absolutely fine. They got the one too, and they got the perfect result. So I don't really see what the issue is here. Again, from Charles Leclerc's perspective, he'll be annoyed that he's not the driver winning. But again, he's driving for Ferrari, not for himself. And uh, well, for Ferrari, you have to say, this weekend has been unbelievable in terms of their result. Anybody out there who says they thought Ferrari would get pole and win the race and get a 1-2, I don't believe you. I, I, I think you're honestly lying if you think that was actually going to happen before we came into the weekend. I thought Ferrari would struggle to get a podium and they've got a 1-2 finish and it's all because of the new upgrade to the front nose cone and the floor. And because of that, Watch out for Ferrari from now on because at Russia and Suzuka, I think Ferrari in qualifying, I think they completely dominate those weekends unless it rains or something. So I think Ferrari, they've completely turned a corner and yet they absolutely can contend for race victories between now and the end of 2019. And it will make the last uh, six races very tough for the other two top teams. But now let's go on to Red Bull. And Max Verstappen uh, got third, which in the context of how the race weekend has been, I think is a good result. But Red Bull will be disappointed with the weekend they've had because they came here thinking they were going to be on the front row of the grid and probably contend for, if not win the race. And they haven't done that at all. They barely got a podium. The Red Bull have really fallen back and I think really because Ferrari have improved that's why Red Bull are looking a lot worse than you know they were a few races ago so Red Bull are basically back to how they were at the start of the season compared to Ferrari and Mercedes I think Red Bull are closer to Mercedes now than they were at the start of the season but Ferrari's big new upgrade has really made things very different at the front of the grid and that's why red bull just haven't this weekend and i don't think going forward into the next grand prix they're going to be as good as maybe we thought they would uh but verstappen i guess did well to get a podium alex alban yes p6 but in my opinion not good enough because he was miles off his teammate's pace. I know at the start he wasn't too far behind, but Verstappen was being held up. But also the front six drivers were all not pushing. They were all trying to save their tyres. So I'm sure Max Verstappen could have gone a lot quicker um, if he wasn't held up. So for me, Albon, this weekend has not had a good weekend. It's not been poor, but it's not been good. So hopefully Albon at the next racetrack, a racetrack he does know well, he can get close to Max Verstappen and actually be right there with him fighting other cars because this weekend just hasn't been quite good enough. But now let's get into the midfield. First off, Renault. And you have to say results-wise, not good enough for Renault because they were outscored by McLaren and Toro Rosso. Of course, McLaren are ahead of them in the constructors and Toro Rosso are only one place behind. So, yeah, not good enough for Renault. They had to definitely get both cars in the points. I know Ricardo started at the back, but he did have, you cannot doubt, a good opportunity at finishing in the points. But contact, I believe, of Antonio Giovinazzi is why he got his front puncture. And that's what really cost him. And I think... I don't really think you can blame Antonio for it, but I don't think you can blame Daniel for it. I think it's really a racing incident, but, you know, Daniel did contribute some of it um, to his own demise. So Daniel Ricciardo cost himself there, then didn't really get back into the action. Uh, Hulkenberg drove well after contact on the first lap where he basically destroyed Carlos Sainz's race. And Hulkenberg, I think, definitely at fault for that because there wasn't really a gap there at turn five. The both Renault drivers not exactly driving as well as they could do. And Renault, in terms of result, just not good enough. Just not good enough. Uh, next up is McLaren. Now, even though Carlos Sainz, um, again, got eliminated from the race basically at turn five on the first lap, 
At least they still scored the most amount of points from the midfield. Lando Norris finishing in P7. That's six points for McLaren. And that is good for the McLaren team because as long as they score more points than Renault and Toro Rosso and teams like that, then they will secure P4 in the constructors. It doesn't matter if they do it well or not so well. As long as they do it, that's all that matters. So good race for the, uh, the two drivers. Or not the two drivers, but for Lando Norris. For Carlos Sainz, again, it was terrible. He got knocked out of the first lap, basically. But good race, good race result. And hopefully in Russia, they can go and do the same once again. Next up, though, is Alfa Romeo, and what a crazy race for Alfa. So first off, Antonio Giovinazzi. Again, as I said in my qualifying review, guys, we have got to start praising him. We have got to. I was a big critic of Antonio, but now I'm really starting to like him because he drove really well today. Yes, the contact of Ricardo, he did play some part in it, but I don't think he really could have done that much to avoid the contact. And deserved to finish in the points. And for a few laps was leading the Grand Prix. Leading the Grand Prix. And I believe that's the first time since the early 1950s where Alpha um, were leading a Grand Prix. So unbelievable scenes. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Giovinazzi in P1. But he was in P1. And... I think he drove very, very well and was consistently better than Kimi Raikkonen for the entire uh, qualifying and race. So great drive by Giovinazzi. Raikkonen, I think Kimi drove well in the race, but he didn't really have that great a speed um, in his car and he wasn't really going that quickly. But then, of course, at one of the many safety car restarts, he got passed by Gasly and Hulkenberg and got put out of the points. Then he let Giovinazzi through. Um, and thankfully they did that and then Daniel Kvyat tried a Jean-Éric Verne at turn one from 2014 um, and took Kimi Raikkonen completely out of the race so shame for him but it's not like Kimi was going to score any points anyway but for Alpha good result not great but good and hopefully at Russia they can go and finish in say P8 if they finished in P8 in Russia that's a good result for them in trying to get back at Renault, at Toro Rosso, at Racing Point, in the Constructors. Next up is Haas. Roman Grosjean proved exactly why we all can't understand why he is at Haas for 2020. With some exceptionally poor driving, and he still finished in P11, somehow. Don't know how, but he did. Um... Yeah, poor race for Grosjean. Magnussen, I actually think K-Mag drove very well. What the problem for K-Mag was is the safety cars. If there were no safety cars, K-Mag might have finished in the points. But the safety cars allowed the people who ran long in the first stint to close up to him, Raikkonen, Perez, drivers like that. I think K-Mag actually drove very well. But the tyres were no longer there at the end of the race. And that's why he dropped back massively. Because he had no uh, tyre life left. And he was on the hardest compound possible. So I think, yeah. Shame for Magnussen. But that's just the way it is. And again, another pointless race for Haas. Uh, next up, Toro Rosso. Daniel Kvyat will first get to him. Just not good enough this weekend, was it? For Daniel, pace-wise... Just was never really at it. And then when he put the soft tyres on at the uh, at, for one of the safety cars, died bomb Kimi Raikkonen, took him out of the race, and Daniel probably should get a penalty for that because he dived from so far back, way too far back, and caused that collision. Uh, but Pierre Gasly, I have to say, did drive well. Um, you know, starting P11, started on the hard compound tyre, went long, got those mediums on, and then got in P8. And his strategy was probably the best tyre strategy I saw out there today in the race. So great by Toro Rosso and good drive by Pierre Gasly to finish in P8 and outscore Renault in this Grand Prix. And if they can, can continue to do that, then maybe they can get after Renault again. And the last midfield team is Racing Point. Shame for them. Uh, Lance Stroll was probably on for points. I'm not sure how many, but he hit the wall at turn 17, got a puncture, 
and eliminated his hopes. And then for Sergio Perez, he was running around P10, but then had some sort of reliability issue. I don't know what that is right now. But that is a shame for him and a shame for Racing Point because I think they were on for a couple points, but it just all fell away from them. Shame for them, but the Russian Grand Prix is definitely going to be a better race because historically Racing Point always go better at Sochi. And of course, finally is Williams who were at the very back, and Russell, of course, was took out by Grosjean and then said that he wasn't surprised that he was took out by Grosjean because Grosjean is just that driver. But guys, that's it for the race review. I'll see you guys for the incident analysis tomorrow at 12 p.m. UK time for this Grand Prix. But you have to say, again in 2019, it wasn't a classic, this race, but again, another great race for the 2019 Formula 1 season.